six months on from the launch of the PlayStation 5 and I've, ugh, I've got one, I've got one! All it took was stock alerts, sleepless nights and one less vital organ. Ah, but I'll tell you something, Miles Morales is great. Going back to Demon's Souls has been a joy, but there is one game that stands above the rest. Astro's Playroom is a platformer made by the geniuses at Japan Studios Team Asobe. And see, after I played it, I said something that I have not said in a long time. And it felt so alien to me that I had to write it down. <clears throat> I did not expect that. Fucking didn't even need to write that down. I could have remembered that. What did I expect Astro's Playroom to be then? Well, it was free, so I don't know, like 30 to 60 minutes of underwhelming minigames. Because you know what? That is all it had to be, really. But in the end, what I found was a cocktail of four distinct parts that come together to create, for me, Game of the Year material. Oh, that's right, he said it. Game of the Year, boys! Number one, just a good platformer. Astro's Playroom does a number of amazing things, right, which I'll get to in just a minute, but they would all be worth nothing if at its heart it wasn't just an amazing wee platformer. Colourful, tight, responsive, and with just the right amount of challenge. On top of just being an amazing platformer though, this game is full of new ways to interact with the controller. It has you squealing with excitement, shouting to people in the room, interrupting them, going, hey, stop what you're doing, stop, I, no, I don't give a shit, it's only CPR, don't worry about it. Look, look at me, being a big monkey, right, and I've, I've got to climb by actually moving the controller like like this and using the triggers like I'm climbing up a wall, it's amazing, it's so good. What's that? He's gone? Yeah, yeah, aye. He wasn't much of an uncle to me anyway, so I... And of course all that stuff is great, but what's really exciting about the dual sense is the smaller moments. It's the way you can feel the difference between grass or ice or glass, it's the way scrolling through a menu pulses the controller, it's the way, and this is the biggest one, you pick up a bow and arrow and you can feel in the adaptive triggers the bow of the bow and arrow. You can, it feels like pulling a bone, it's just, it's, I don't get it, it's, how can this finger on a button just pushing down, how can that feel like pulling back on a bow? It's, it's fucking witchcraft. Can someone look into that? I don't trust them. I don't trust them, there's some kind of black magic. And on top of all of that is, is this kind of beautiful celebration of PlayStation history done throughout the ages. Walls covered in murals of all the years we've been playing these machines for. Big 3D models of consoles and accessories that you can jump all over and interact with. Honestly, I. I shed a tear over a, a PlayStation 1 multi-tap, a virtual PlayStation 1 multi-tap, which, let's clarify, the PlayStation 1 multi-tap was an overpriced peripheral that served a function that Nintendo gave you for free. Oh God. But if that doesn't say PlayStation, I don't know what does. And then there's all these little nods to PlayStation franchises from throughout the years, you know, and of course you've got your usual suspects, you've got God of War, you've got The Last of Us, but then you've got bloody Vip Ribbon and, and Silent Hill too. But then every level ends, right, <laughs> with this special wee area that's designed completely around PlayStation menu systems that takes inspiration from, from the look and feel and sounds to create something where you feel you feel like you're inside them. I didn't realise how emotional I would get at that big PlayStation 1 fanfare or hearing the kind of orchestral startup of the PlayStation 3, kind of being inside it and being able to interact with it. I think I kind of thought the PlayStation 5, right, was going to be the pinnacle of consoles not really being that interesting anymore. I thought it was going to be Assassin's Creed and Call of Duty till we all died, but to play something like this that's so weird and so appreciative of, of, of the history of PlayStation games, but not even just the obvious stuff, the weird stuff. It's exciting to know that there's people out there making games that, you know, think about them and love them in the kind of weird way that I do. It's nice. It feels like a statement of intent, which I hope it is. It feels like Sony are going, hey, See this console? See this one? And see the next few years? Let's just have fun. And I tell you what, that is my kind of statement. That is my kind of statement. Ugh.